meteorologist Corey Thompson. Still keeping an eye on the chance of some showers and storms over the next 24 hours. We're catching a little bit of a lull right now, but the possibility of some additional development or some more to move in sticks with us over the next 24 hours and probably a little bit beyond that too. Right now, pinpoint Doppler radar though shows that lull here in eastern Iowa. A little bit of light rain still in our far southeastern counties. We'll pinpoint that just to emphasize a little shower passing through Oskaloosa, but that was previously a more intense cluster of storms that at least had some lightning to it. The severe weather with this round of activity has pushed to the southeast. Now, northwest Iowa, a pretty big cluster of storms pressing south-southeast, not making a big turn just yet, but a little bit of an indication that's moved a little bit more east than south lately, so we'll keep an eye on that. More storms in South Dakota to keep an eye on as well, as we're right on the edge of this warm and humid air, and that is sometimes where those storms like to track, and that's what we'll have to keep an eye on through the rest of the morning. Our Dubuque City Cam showing a picture of a somewhat cloudy sky. These are clouds from the storms to the south, but generally dry conditions north of Interstate 80 this morning. Temperatures in Washington around 66 degrees where they had storms move through earlier. Dubuque got 69. Dew points all in the upper 60s to around 70 and we'll keep those very muggy conditions going throughout the day. In fact, your first alert forecast for today, 80 degrees in Decorah for a high close to 90 in Washington right at 89 degrees. A little bit of sun will help warm things up pretty quickly, help build up some of that energy for the potential additional rounds of storms. So here's where we are this morning. What's left of those storms this morning quickly exiting. Maybe a few scattered storms though entering the picture later this morning into the afternoon. Now unfortunately the setup that we have today is just not one of a very clear and obvious trigger of storms that will be at a specific time pushing across the area. Instead it's a weather regime where we could have storms developing just about any time but not a guarantee that they will take place at a particular time. So it's a day to stay weather aware throughout because when storms develop notice how intense they got here on pinpoint future cast during the afternoon. If those take place we'll have some heat and humidity to work with and they could intensify. Same story as we head toward tonight. Overnight storms, perhaps another round as we've seen the past couple of mornings to affect us as we head toward Wednesday morning. Because of that general threat across the area, we do have a slight risk for severe storms across most of the TV9 viewing area. Damaging wind is the main threat here, but an isolated tornado, isolated large hail can't be ruled out either. So it's your first alert to what could be a stormy day, but it's not a promise. It's just because of the heat and humidity that we have around that that threat today is at its highest. Now, over the next several days, we still do have some more storm chances. Could be some strong storms on Wednesday, especially on Wednesday night. Then we see that activity start to wind down by the time we get toward Thursday. We'll still keep a slight chance there, but drier weather arrives for the weekend. That's as temperatures turn only slightly cooler in some cases and really not that big of a difference at all. The more noticeable difference may be a slight decrease in our humidity levels. Notice those overnight lows go from the low 70s back to the mid 60s. A little bit of improvement, but not a drastic one. Uh, so just be settling in for some summer like weather as we start off August. Weatherwise, question for today about how fast can an updraft get in the most intense thunderstorms? Remember, this is air moving up in the thunderstorm 10 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour, 60 or 100 miles an hour. When I'm debating between C and D if it gets that quick. I think I'll go D. I was debating between B and C, so maybe I'll split the difference and do C, 60. I'd love to split the difference on this show, and the answer is D. It can get that strong. Most thunderstorms, not that much or not that fast of air moving up, but in those big supercell thunderstorms, think about a storm that produces baseball-sized hail. Think about how much air has to be pushing upward to lift something that heavy, which is easily going to fall to the ground if it didn't have that. So, yeah, it does require a pretty fast wind speed. Fortunately, like I said, that is more on the rare end than on the common end. Yeah, luckily so. That would be a lot of damage. Uh, very much so. All right, thanks, Corey. Yeah.